Hey guys, Ivan here, and in this video we have a couple of very extremely, I would say, interesting stories. I was actually about to take a, a little nap, a power nap, before I trained, because guys, I'm currently two weeks out of my show. Yeah, I have been prepping for the past two, three months. Maybe I should include you guys a little bit more into my personal life, but who cares about my competition, really? Soon I'll probably stop filming for a couple of weeks so I can focus on my shows, but I'm still around, and when I saw these stories that I'm gonna show you in this video, I thought I had to make a video about it right away as soon as possible so we are starting as you can see with a physique update a posing video of big Remy who officially started dieting let me rewind this video and let's take a look at it again so front double bicep as you can see he's definitely getting much harder you can see it in his abs in his shoulders in his chest there is vascularity showing up his delts are looking super freaky a little bit suspicious too but those delts are what is making big remy so impressive so freaky one of the freakiest bodybuilders of all time like ronnie coleman had crazy arms crazy back crazy glutes and legs but remy he has big legs also but also he has really wide and really popping shoulders and that's his trademark check out his conditioning in the back is that a Christmas tree? Oh yeah, hell yeah it is, it's a good Christmas tree. And we haven't really seen it so far in his progress photos and videos, so right now that he started dieting, as you can see, body fat is stripping off quite rapidly, and it is surprising that his lower back is getting so shredded so easy, so fast, that I'm guessing they probably did something different in this off-season. Maybe he was doing more deadlifts, more rack pulls, more back extensions, because earlier that was sort of an issue for Big Remy. In all of his back poses, his lower back was never really super dry, never lean enough, and the reason for that could be weak spinal erectors. As you guys know, Big Remy didn't really get into bodybuilding in a traditional way. It's usually like when guys start training, they start doing like heavy bench, heavy deadlift, heavy squat, and then they slowly get into more isolation type of movements. Big Remy started training very late, and he was found by another guy who owned the gym, and so he got him into bodybuilding straight away, and bodybuilders don't always do deadlifts, it's more of a powerlifting exercise, so he never really had those years and years of heavy deadlifting and that's probably why he didn't develop crazy lower back but as you can see now he made improvements and also you guys probably notice this in your physiques too when you have more muscle in certain area that's usually the area where you get conditioned easily the easiest the fastest for me personally the body part that gets conditioned easiest is quads i have pretty good quads but I don't have very deep abs and I don't really have an 8-pack, I have like a short 6-pack, so belly button down, I accumulate more fat and that's like the area where I get conditioned last. In Big Ramy's case, that has always been his lower back. His glutes tend to get really conditioned, but his lower back is always a little bit behind everything else, no pun intended. Now, as you can see right here, right now, it looks improved. It looks drier already and he only just started dieting. When he stretches the lats, when he does the back lat spread, it also looks improved and it just looks drier, the entire back. So I'm pretty sure he actually improved that back. When he turns around, you're gonna see that it's still a little bit shallow, it's not the thickest back ever, you can see it here in the back, <laughs> look at the size of the shoulders and arms. But look at the back right here, right here, as you can see it's kind of flat, it's kind of shallow, he doesn't have the greatest back thickness. Here is an example of somebody who has crazy back thickness today, James Hollins had a look at the thickness on the side, like crazy back thickness, also back in the day Dorian Yates was kind of known for that chest to back thickness, he had a lot of muscle in that back, it's not even comparable to Big Ramy, not really. But as I said, Big Remy has some other traits that make him one of the freakiest bodybuilders of all time and that's gotta be shoulders along with legs. And he's not even showing his legs right now, but you can see shoulders are looking ridiculous. A lot of people are accusing him of sight enhancement oil, I don't know if that's it, I don't know if it's just genetics, crazy training or whatever it is, but his delts right now look absolutely sick. They make him look freaky and impressive and if everything runs smoothly for Big Remy, he is very likely to become a three-time Mr. Olympia winner. If you guys have any issues sleeping, remember, sleep is very important. 
Old School Labs has a great natural, all natural product for you guys and it works like charm. It's called Vintage Bliss, the link is down below and if you want a 15% discount just use the code EVEN and this is a great way to support me and my channel, thank you guys. Alright, now let's move on to something very, very interesting, very intriguing. It's Nick Walker posting a photo of himself doing a most muscular, in which his conditioning looks pretty good. It looks it looks great, I gotta say, his conditioning looks awesome, he's very conditioned, he's very, uh, very hard and very lean. But what I found very interesting about his photo is the comment of Matt Jensen. What the hell does this mean? I mean, you guys know that uh, Nick Walker was sponsored by Raw and Rewive for a while, and he was coached by Matt Jensen. Basically, Nick Walker became what he is today while working with Matt Jensen. With Matt Jensen, Nick Walker turned pro, won New York, won Arnold Classic, was fifth at the Mr. Olympia, and then they, for some reason, parted ways. The reason, what I heard, was that Nick Walker wanted uh, to be the only client, the only open bodybuilding client of Matt Jensen, which of course Matt Jensen refused, so Nick Walker went to Dom Super Sliced to be his new coach, and his new sponsor is Hostile. As far as Matt Jensen and Nick Walker, from what I heard, they didn't really end things in a bad way, but they didn't really stay friends either, and this is the first time I'm seeing Matt commenting on Nick's photo ever since they broke up, of course. Now, as you can see, the comment is, there is work to be done. What the hell does this mean? This looks like you're not in condition, you don't look good enough, there is still more work to be done before you look ready for the stage. Is that what Matt Jensen is saying? Is he trying to put Nick down? I don't think so, it's not really Matt's style, it doesn't really look like him much. The only other logical explanation that I can come up with would be that they actually started working together again. And then it would make sense for Matt to say there is work to be done. Like, we have work to do, us together as a team. I don't think Matt Jensen would go to Instagram page of Nick Walker after they broke up, after Nick started working with another coach and just comment on his photo and say, there is work to be done, you have to do more work, you're not ready yet. What the hell would that even mean? Why would he do that? So it really looks like Matt Jensen and Nick Walker are back together, are working together again. Now there is another thing that you guys may not have noticed in this photo. Check out the upper center part of the photo, right above Nick's head. Who's that? That's Matt Jensen. <laughs> That's Matt Jensen. What the hell is he doing right here? I have no idea. I'm only guessing, I'm assuming that these guys are back together. If they broke up, really, would Matt Jensen actually go and look at Nick Walker? If you guys really follow all these guys, Matt Jensen, Nick Walker, you guys maybe know where this posing room is at. Is it where Nick is training or is it where Matt is training? Did Nick Walker go to Matt or Matt came to Nick? If you guys know something, let me know. But there is another possibility, it's that this photo is simply an old photo. Would Nick Walker post an old photo with Matt Jensen posing from last year, I don't know, but he does look a little bit harder and more conditioned than he did in his previous recent photos, so this could be from last year, and maybe Matt Jensen and Nick Walker are now in good terms and they talk, and so that's why he posted an old photo with both of these guys, and Matt Jensen wrote this comment just to play with us, just to tease us, just to intrigue us, maybe there is that. There are a couple of possibilities and options, which one is true, I don't know, as of yet. I tracked out Nick's stories, Dom Super Slice stories, Matt Jensen stories, all their profiles, I didn't find anything. As soon as I find out more, I will let you know, guys, so stay tuned, subscribe to my channel, but if you guys have any information, please share it with us in the comment section down below. Alright, next, at one week out of a pro qualifier, I know, it sounds funny to say that this guy needs to do a pro qualifier, but that's how it is, he needs to win a pro card in MPC, Michal Krizo is at 130 kilos, 
That's right, 130 kilos, which in pounds is 286 freaking pounds. So right now, this guy is really big. In that caption, he also says that he is empty, which means depleted from carbs, flat, which you can see, sort of, he is a little bit flat, which, of course, is part of the progress. He never before really posted all of his photos coming into the shows. He always would post, like, one week out or after the show, so you would see him full blown, conditioned already and everything, this time around he, he actually documented his entire prep because he's definitely way more popular since he moved to the MPC, he went away from IBB Elite Pro, so now we watch him prep and as you can see he doesn't look that great, like you can't compare this to what we saw earlier of Big Ramy and Nick Walker, but this is just part of the process, it's reasonable that he's flat right now, it's one week out, so he is probably as depleted, as flat, and as bad that he will ever look this prep. Now, of course, as I said, he first has to do a pro qualifier. And if he's gonna do a pro qualifier and then do a pro show, he didn't have to start using stuff like, you know, orals, you know, fat burners, hardening agents. He doesn't have to do that as of yet. Like, those things don't take a long time to really start working, so... When he needs to win a pro card, he can do that easily. He doesn't have to push things. He doesn't have to do a lot of stuff. So he can save it. He can save himself for the pro show where he really needs to peak. Here's another photo from one week out. And then, after the pro qualifier, he is going to push things. Because if he wants to win the Prague Pro... You know, he's probably going to win it, but it's not going to be easy because there are some heavy hitters from Europe that might really challenge him. Who knows which one of the guys who just competed at the Iron Classic UK will manage to qualify before Prague Pro. Like, we know that Brad Wilkin is prepping for Romania, and one week before Romania we have Prague Pro. So Brad Wilkin might show up in Prague. James Hollingshead, who just competed at the UK Arnold, will not do a Moto of France. So he might do Prague Pro, and he said that in a video, he might do it, but he believes um, Michal Krizh is probably going to win that show. Also, Michal is sponsored by DVLS Prague Pro, so maybe he has a little bit of an advantage. I don't know how much is that going to affect the judging, honestly, but let's be real. So if he wants to be... If he wants to win that Prague Pro, he needs to be at 100%. And I don't think this is him at 100%. This is like 70% maybe. And that show, he's probably going to be like 75, 80. And then at Prague Pro, I am expecting, I am predicting him to be at 100. And he's going to win Prague Pro and qualify for the Mr. Olympia. That's just my prediction. Now, as far as the next pro show that is happening tomorrow, it's Yamamoto France. And as you can see, Mark Hector is doing it. So I've kind of already done a little preview of this show. And on that list, we did not have Mark Hector. However, we did have James Hollingshead. But these guys actually changed places. James is not going to do Yamamoto. However, Mark Hector is there. He is doing it. Who else is doing it? Well, AJ Kelly Roberts made a great post in which he basically explains who came there, who showed up, who is going to do this show. And it's actually great news because he says, France Pro tomorrow and we have a show. Mark Hector is in and he's down 9 pounds since the Arnold Classic. So we are gonna see Mark Hector with much better conditioning. He was definitely way too heavy. He was way too soft, way too blurry. Now that he lost another 9 pounds... I'm guessing most of it is going to be water. I think he was fat. I think he just spilled over a little bit too much. Now, when he improves, he is actually my favorite to win this show and qualify for the Mr. Olympia. Then uh, he also mentions uh, AKA the Giant, which is Jamie Johal. Then also, he says, very important, he says Lionel Biaki is there. He says, uh, the moment Lionel Biaki fans have been waiting for is here. Lionel Biaki is ready for bodybuilding action. Can you guys believe it? Can you believe that, that actually Lionel Biak is actually going to be on stage? I don't. <laughs> I gotta say, I don't. I'm reading this, but I don't buy it. Until I see him on stage, I don't believe this. So I don't have him in my prediction. I can't even say what he can do. We'll see if he shows up and then we're going to do a prediction right there on stage. And then also, uh, he says, Patrick Johnson, the highest ranking athlete at this show, would have to be considered the favorite on paper. So, 
None of these guys have a Mr. Olympia qualification. It's going to be a great show. Also, Wesley Visters is coming uh, and he is battling the guy who was fourth at the UK. So he's probably going to win this show, Wesley. And he also said in his YouTube video that he's going to try to get more condition, which is something he definitely needs to do. And I think this show is going to be between Mark Hector and Patrick Johnson. Also, Lionel Biecki, if he shows up somehow, he definitely could be in the mix. It's going to be an interesting show, guys. I will make sure to make a video about it. So guys, stay tuned, subscribe. And that's gonna do it for this video, guys. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And again, for more bodybuilding stuff like this, subscribe to my channel, guys. Thank you so much for watching. All the best and bye-bye.